it's Lisa from I Dream In Soap. Welcome to my channel. Thanks so much for popping by. Now, for this soap, I don't know if you saw the last video that I did where I did a robot soap. This is sort of the soap that follows on from that, and it's going to be a soap in the shape of a bus. Now, <laughs> you might think bus, robot, robot, bus, how the dickens are those related? Well, if you saw my last video, what I did in there is I explained that when I initially drew out my little sketch and my plan for my robot soap and I showed Paul, he said it looked like a bus rather than a robot. So I then thought, well, that's great because I can then make that into a bus. So a couple of tweaks um, with colouring and shape changes and using a different mould and that sort of thing. And I'm going to do a bus now. Now, one of the things I really want to make sure I do with this soap is... I kind of want to make this soap without really any special tools. Without extruders, without scrapers and that sort of thing. Now, I must admit I am going to use a scraper with this, but it's only because it's very easy for me to make scrapers. The scraper is incredibly simple. It's just, you could easily just cut it out of cardboard. There's nothing fancy in it at all. It'd be very, very simple for you to make yourself. And also the embeds that I've got in the soap, I haven't made those with extruders. Certainly you could if you had extruders, but I really wanted to make this a soap that you could just make if you've got some soap dough and you can make some soap, you can just make this soap without any fancy tools at all. So all the embeds that I've made in this soap have literally been for me taking some soap dough and then just rolling it out with a rolling pin and making it nice and flat and then just cutting the shapes out that I wanted. Because I didn't really need any complicated shapes. I needed an oblong for a number plate and some thinner oblongs for some windscreen wipers and then I just needed some circles for some lights. So didn't really need extruders. So that's what I'm going to do today and hopefully this will lead to a soap that if you haven't got any fancy tools or don't like using any fancy tools that maybe you'll have a go at yourself. So come on let's go and make some soap. So I've got the oils for my first level. So this is just my melted oils. I'm going to add some activated charcoal. Now I always predisperse my activated charcoal in some oil. I just do it in this container here and then I just give it a good old stir out. I find with activated charcoal you can't, well I certainly I can't, predisperse it. You know you like TD, you just do it in a bottle and give it a shake and it's sort of it splits itself up as it were. I find activated charcoal won't do that, it's too clumpy. Now, the reason I predisperse my activated charcoal, because I know a lot of people don't, is I found that it was quite prone to giving you bubbles, air bubbles, tiny lots and tiny little air bubbles in your soap if you just added the dry powder into your oils. And I found I had some soaps, you know, quite a while ago where the areas of black had tiny weeny little air bubbles all through them. So now I predisperse and that gets rid of that. So let's just add in. Now the fragrance oil I'm using is Black Plum and Rhubarb from Candle Shack in the UK and it's one of my most popular fragrances, everyone seems to love it and I couldn't really think for a bus what was a <laughs> particular fragrance that we should be using so I just went for something that's really popular. Okay my batch is reasonably thick but that's how I want it and that fragrance oil actually loosened it up a little bit. Now I'm just going to leave that for a little while, just to thicken up a bit more, just so it doesn't flow all over the areas of the mould I don't want it to. To start off this soap, I've made some embeds. Now, if you remember this last video that I did, if you watched that with my robot soap, I said I was going to do a soap 
with some embeds that I didn't want to use any extruders or anything like that in it and this is what I'm doing here so all I've done is I've made some very simplistic embeds I've made some long tubes some long circles so all I did with those is I just got some soap dough and I just rolled it and rolled it and rolled it till I got my long strips and how I get them nice and flat is I basically take something flat like this piece of plastic you can't really see that I know but a chopping board or something and I roll them with that and that gets them nice and sort of flat and round you can see they're not perfect they're a little bit wibbly wobbly but they're going to be absolutely fine and then I've got just a, a white piece here I rolled out my soap dough and then just cut this strip out fairly thick and then I've got some thinner black strips as well Okay, so those are all my embeds and again I just did that by rolling out the soap dough really thin and then cutting that soap dough up into the sizes that I wanted. Okay, let's get this soap into the mould for those wheels on our bus. So our soap really quite nice and thick now, which is good because we can just pop that in our corners. It's still got a nice sort of consistency, nice lot of movement on it, so I shouldn't be getting any air pockets with it okay so I'm just going to sort of push this into position and then leave it to set up a little bit more and then I've got a little scraper to help me get the right shape that I want I think we're set up enough to get this scraped now I've got a proper scraper for mine because I made it but you could easily just cut this out of some cardboard um, cover it with some tape if you want to reuse it but yeah sometimes I just make a simple scraper out of some cardboard use it and then throw it away afterwards so I'm just going to go through it and make the shape of the wheels at the bottom now this is going to take a few scrapes because I've put a limited amount of soap in there and I've now got to sort of get it in the right position as it were rather than you know when you normally fill up a whole layer and then scrape the soap out I didn't do that because I didn't want to have all the soap coming out as I scraped it I didn't want to waste the soap on the scrapings as it were so I'm gonna have to sort of move things around there is only one of you there's a million of those who won't let us be But they're not gonna, not gonna see me bleed Cause baby I got you, 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 you I've been beaten to the ground, dragged across the dirt Okay so there's us all sorted out and I've tidied up the sides as well So they're all nice and clean around the edges So we can get with our next layer But they're not gonna, not gonna watch me burn Cause baby I got you you may not have heard anything that I said going on there so just a quick summary with that um, I, I just mixed up my next bit of soap with the tiniest bit of TD and activated charcoal to get a grey colour and then I just poured it level with those wheels while it was nice and fluid to give a flat layer I'm now just going to let that set up before moving on my next layer is going to be the bumper of the bus, so just a straight single pour. I'm using Antique Silver here from Micah Mama, and I'm just going to plop that straight into the oils again because it's a single colour. 
so there's no need for me to predisperse that. Then in goes my lye and sodium lactate. Now I'm not going to blend too much because I want it to stay nice and fluid because it's important that this bumper is nice and level on the top. So I think that would do. Okay, so let's just pour that straight in. Okay, so that's nice and level. And again, let's just leave that to set up. Right, we're now going to move on to the yellow bit of the bus. So again, it's going to be a single colour, so I'm just going to add my mica straight into my oils. And this is Sunshine Yellow from Mica Mama. And it's my favourite yellow. In fact, apart from Neon Yellow, it's the only yellow that I ever use. Sunshine Yellow Mica Mama. Just get that dispersing into our oil. one what I want to do is I want to put my lights and my number plate in my yellow layer that we're doing but I want a little bit of yellow at the bottom and then I want the lights and the number plates to be in a nice straight row and then I want it straight on the top so my plan for this is I am going to mix it all up let's pop in my lye solution and my sodium lactate Now that's probably not even at an emulsion yet. I just wanted to make sure my lye was properly dispersed in those oils. I'm going to pour about a third of it off. So let me just go and measure that. Okay, so I've divided that out. Now I did weigh it it wasn't because I wanted to be super exact. I knew I wanted to pour off about a third. And I must admit, I struggle when I'm trying to do a third to, to go from... If it's two similar sized jugs, I'm all right with it. But when it's a bigger jug and a smaller jug, I do struggle a little bit. And yeah, I know there's some sort of measurements on the jug, but they're really not very clear. So what I want to do is I'm going to put this little bit to the side and that shall stay fluid. And I'm going to let this bit thicken up a little bit more. So I'm going to blend it a bit more. Now I don't want it to get too thick because I still want it to create a nice layer. Let's add my fragrance oil. Now this is one third. So, so I need 18, well 17.95 grams of fragrance oil in this layer. So that would be uh, six six grams just if i put six grams in here then i can put the rest in the other so that'd be fine <laughs> that's my cat moaning because she's not allowed in here and she's wondering what mummy's doing okay i'm not going to blend it anymore with that stick blender because i need this to be a well, I want it to be as flat as possible, this layer. Just so that my lights and everything are level. I'll give it a little mix with my mini blender, I think. Okay, so now what I want to do, because I want to pour this in while it's fluid, but I want it to set up really quickly, is I'm just going to add a little heat to that by popping in the microwave for about 10 seconds. Mm, yeah, at the most. Okay, so that's brought that up to about 106 degrees Fahrenheit 
from the sort of low 80s that I had the rest. I can see this layer is all ready to go. It's set up, we can see that because it's gone sort of dull in colour. So let's just pour this on. And the advantage with using heat, as long as you don't use too much, is that if you stick blend it to get it to a thick consistency, you're not going to be able to get a nice smooth layer because you won't have a pourable consistency. Can you see how that's nice and wiggleable? <laughs> Wobbleable, wiggleable, flattable. You can make it go flat. But because we added heat there, that will now start the heat process to set that up quicker. So I, I quite often prefer that as a method. I, I'll blend it to so it's still quite a thin trace, but then I'll add a little extra heat. So as soon as it stops moving, have you noticed with soap sometimes, like if you have an accelerating fragrance oil, if you put it in the soap and blend and mix it, it seems, or well, some of them <laughs> seem okay. As soon as you put it to the side to mix something else and you go back to it, it's like, ah, oh, no, it's set up. That's because soap, as soon as it's allowed to sit, then that's when it starts setting up. So hopefully this will get this starting to set up for me and keep this nice and fluid. Okay, I'm just gonna give this a little stir to keep it fluid. Right, so I'm just gonna leave that. I don't need this set up solid, but I just want it to support the weight of my embeds and allow me to put them down in a nice level layer. I think we're almost there. I don't really want to wait any longer because I don't want the soap in this jug to get much thicker. So I'm going to start putting my tubes in which are going to represent the lights. And then I've just grabbed a random scraper out of my cupboard just to go along and push them because my and they may be a little bit wobbly sideways. I'm hoping that won't really show bar to bar, but I'm hoping by doing this I will get them level. Let's get the number plate in. So let's finish off with the rest of my yellow. Don't forget my fragrance oil. Um, so I, I had another 12 grams, well just under 12 grams, wasn't it, to add into here. Let me just check that. Yes, yeah, so it was 17.95, so I've got 11.95 to add in here. So that's beautifully in level so I'm going to leave that once more there's a surprise and let that set up and then we're going to put some windscreen wipers in so that yellow has got quite firm now so I'm going to drop in my windscreen wipers which are just these black thinly cut or thinly rolled out and then cut bits of soap dough okay I'm just going to push them down very gently just to make sure they're sticking to the yellow soap but I don't want them to move the yellow soap and make it an unlevel surface and then all I want to do with that is once I'm happy that they're in full contact with the yellow I'm just going to pour white over the top to be a windscreen I'm not 
So here's our bus the next day. Let's get this chopped up, shall we? Let's have a look at what we've got. Hey, <laughs> ta-da! Here's our little bus. He <laughs> looks really cute. Ha. That is very cute. I really like that. Oh, I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased how straight. I've managed to get those embeds. Let's have a look. Because they can be tricky little things. So I think the thickness of the batter using a slightly thicker batter. And also the way that I just took that could have just been a piece of card or something. And I just went through and I just pushed that down to try and make sure I leveled those embeds up nicely. So I think it's come out really well. I do like my little bus or truck or whatever. There it is. And it was pretty, you know, I wouldn't say ridiculously easy soap to make, but it was a nice sort of straightforward soap to make. As I said, you didn't need really to have any extruders or anything. As you know, I just rolled these embeds out. I rolled out my soap dough and cut it out into the shapes. So no real special tools. I did obviously use a scraper, if you remember that I said, to get the wheel shapes here. But again, you could just cut yourself out a piece of card for that. And I did just gently scrape the top just to get that sort of rounded bit on the bus with those little lines on its roof. OK, so I do think it's a, a perfectly feasible soap to make without any fancy tools. If you've just got some cardboard and you've got some soap dough, you could make that quite easily. And just as I'm finishing off with a couple of pictures of the soap, I thought I'd just mention my Patreon page. If you'd like to make this soap or maybe some of the others that you've seen on my YouTube channel, but you struggle with working out how much soap you need and you want some detailed instructions, why not join my Patreon middle level tier, where once a month I create a design plan for one of the soaps you'll have seen recently. And that design planner you can use to to put the dimensions of your mold in and it will tailor the amount of soap you need for each layer and give you detailed instructions on how to make the soaps. If that's something that appeals to you, pop over to my Patreon now and maybe you can join up. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you like the soap. If you have, it'd be great if you gave me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, why not subscribe to my channel? Thanks for watching, everyone. Happy soaping.